If you're new to the Android world or to the Samsung world or you've upgraded your phone to the Galaxy S20 after a long time, you must watch this video because I'm going to help you with some settings that would get you the most out of your new S20. The first thing you want to do is make your screen animations and transitions faster. It'll make you feel as if your Galaxy S10 is performing faster. And to do this, go into settings, advanced features, and then just turn on reduce animations. It's turned off by default, just turn it on. And then you'll feel the difference almost instantly. The next thing you wanna do is get this annoying Samsung daily screen to go off. So just pinch in and then swipe to Samsung daily and turn it off. And now if you try swiping in the left direction, you will see that you remain on your home screen. The next thing you want to do is configure your side key to give you power off and restart options when you long press. By default, it doesn't do that. It turns on Bixby. Now, go into side key settings and press and hold should be set to power off menu. Also, by default, double tapping the power button launches camera, but you could pretty much set any app to be launched when you double tap it. So let's say calculator, you double tap it and it opens up calculator. Coming to the next one is changing your navigation. If you see, I have this traditional back, home, and recent keys, which is slightly difficult to use because every time to go back, you have to stretch your thumb all the way uh, for that back key. Go into display and then navigation bar settings, switch to full screen gestures, and then hit more options, and then go for swipe from sides and bottom. What that does is it brings the back key on the left and the side edges, which is a lot easier to access. And the center button just acts like either a home key, or you can use that to go between various apps that you had opened recently. So you can you know, just swipe left or swipe right to access your recently opened apps. Of course, you could just swipe and hold to access all your recently opened apps as well. The next step is actually the first thing I do, which is swiping down should open my notification panel because that's one thing I access the most and I'm pretty sure you do that too, but it's not the thing that's turned on by default. So to do that, just long press on your home screen, go into home screen settings and look for that setting that says swipe down for notification panel. Just turn that on because it's turned off by default and you'll be all set, just like that. Now, by default, the volume buttons are configured to change ringer volume. So you can go all the way down to vibrate or mute or change the media volume. But I actually use the volume button even more for changing media volume. So just turn on use volume keys for media. And now you can always by default change your media volume that is for music or videos using the volume keys. Coming to the next one, you will see that I have these six settings up front and these are six settings that I use the most. So they're configured as per my preferences. To do that, just go into button order and now you can literally press and hold and rearrange these icons, basis your preference and have the first six ones be the ones that you use the most and the ones you don't use, just simply take them out. That way you have a much smaller and neater and cleaner quick panel layout. Also, you could go into status bar. Now, Currently, my battery is not showing how much percentage is left and there's no way I can just tell by looking at it. Just turn on show battery percentage. That'll help you a lot more. By the way, have you noticed if you pull down the notification panel, you will see these icons for media and devices, not the brightness bar, which is all the way hidden in double swipe. You can actually change that. Go into quick panel layout and then enable show brightness on top and disable media and devices because I'm guessing you don't use that as much and then you have that. The next one has to do with always on display. And guys, I actually love that whole functionality. Just a glance on the phone and you know if there's something new or not. But ironically, it's not set to always on when the phone ships to you. So that's something that you have to switch. And you can find those settings in display and then in always on display. Okay, there are a couple of clock options that are also available for you to try out. So you can, you know, have an analog one. You can have GIFs playing. So yeah, get fancy. And there are a couple of color options that are also available, right from gradients to solid colors. So yeah, you have all that customization available. Now your S10 ships with the light mode as default, and you can always switch to dark mode, which I do because I prefer dark mode all the time, but you can actually schedule it. So, you know, it can be light during the day and then it automatically switches over to dark mode as it sunsets, or you could have a custom schedule to it if you want. So you can set a start time and an end time. Do not apply this to wallpaper, otherwise your wallpapers would be darker, especially the white wallpapers would look a little washed out if you enable this setting. And obviously guys, please go ahead and set your refresh rate to 120 Hertz under display settings. Your phone's going to work so much smoother 
and you'd love this setting. Uh, I'm guessing that's one of the reasons you bought the phone as well. But yeah, it's, it is going to eat up more battery. So, you know, you might lose about one to two hours depending upon usage. And lastly, coming to the camera, there are a couple of settings that I change. First, there are a couple of modes that are already up front shown to you in your camera interface. You don't need all of that. It just makes it a little difficult for you to get to a mode that you want. So what I do is, I rearrange them. So you can just press the edit button and then long press on modes and take the ones you don't use and pull out the ones that you do use. And that's it. Now I only have about four or five of them outside, the ones that I really want to use. And yeah, I just basically want photo and live focus, video and the pro mode. Everything else is inside more, which I can still access by the way, but it's just neater. Next, go into camera settings, go into save options, enable ultra wide shape correction, because if you do use ultra wide lens, there could be some distortion at the edges and that gets you know, somewhat saved. And the next thing I do is set my video quality to 60 FPS 1080p by default. So I do get high frame rate smooth videos and it's 1080p because 4K and 8K displays are quite rare. Everything else I leave almost as it is. Except you could go ahead and turn on voice control so you don't always have to, you know, stretch your thumb to get that shutter button to take a picture. You can just say capture or shoot and it'll just start doing that. Also, if you follow what I'm doing right now, I go into beauty mode and I turn the filter off. It just sort of applies a skin smoothening to make your skin look better and smoother and it just puts me off. And I do the same thing for the front facing camera as well. So that's it guys. Those were some of the most basic settings you can change and set in your Galaxy S20. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment them in the section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next one.